Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs and leaders like the founders you've heard of, some you've never heard of. And, you know, Dave, what I like telling is the stories of some of the challenging times. So not, you know, super successful necessarily yet. You know, I remember when I was talking to Tony Horton, you know, who is one of the founders of P90X. And, you know, they've sold hundreds of millions of dollars of DVDs and programs. But... I loved hearing the story of when he was uh, making money as a street mime. So he'd put his hat on the street and he made his food and rent money from being a street mime. And that was, you know, crazy times for him. And um, also Nolan Bushnell, who's founder of Atari, you know, he was Steve Jobs' mentor and Steve offered Nolan 33% of Apple for $50,000 and why he said no. That and many more stories at inspiredinsider.com. Check it out. And, uh, you know, I'm excited to introduce today's guest, Dave Woodward, uh, from ClickFunnels. Before I do, just a quick um, note is this episode is brought to you by Rise25. And Rise25, I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. And basically, we help B2B businesses connect to their Dream 100 clients and referral partners and help you run your podcast so it generates ROI. Um, you know, Dave and Russell at ClickFunnels are huge proponents of the Dream 100. You should check out their content and they talk about it all the time. And, you know, podcasting for me has been the best thing I've done for my business and my life. I've gone to people's weddings, I've gone on family vacations, and I've done a lot of business with people as well. But it was really inspired by something more personal for me. And I consider podcasting also leaving a legacy. Like, I can listen to Dave, Dave's podcast. Um, and you know, you know, he creates it two years ago, three years ago, I can listen to it from years to come. And my grandfather was a Holocaust survivor and him and his brother were in the concentration camps in Nazi Germany. They were the only members of their family to survive. And you know, what does this have to do with podcasting? Well, the uh, Holocaust foundation did an interview with him and is he's not alive anymore, but you can go to inspiredinsider.com, the, the about page and actually listen and watch that full uh, hour interview that they did. And um, I can get a piece of him whenever I want, uh, even though he's not around. And so, yes, podcasting is amazing for your business, but it also helps you and your guests leave a legacy. Um, so if you have questions about podcasting, you actually want to get ROI from it, um, you can go to rise25.com or you can email us at support at rise25media.com. And uh, without further ado, I want to introduce today's guest. Um, you know, Dave Woodward, I met at Tony G's dinner at Traffic and Conversion. Uh, amazingly humble, super nice person. And, you know, we call, I guess you call yourself the chief revenue officer. I say you bring in the money. So you're chief revenue officer of ClickFunnels and host of Funnel Hacker Radio podcast. And... ClickFunnels, if you haven't heard of it, is a software that lets people design and create sales pages, landing pages, order forms, membership sites seamlessly. And as their website you know, eloquently says, you can quickly create beautiful sales funnels that convert your visitors into leads and then into customers. And you know, they have over 100,000 users at this point in time. They've helped people create over 6 million funnels, generating over $4 billion dollars. Um, and this isn't Dave's first rodeo. He's, you know, was president owner of Monopolize for over 17 years, and he's helped businesses grow in all different industries, insurance, investments, mortgage, real estate, and much more. Dave, thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I'm excited to be here. This will be fun. You know, um, there's so many, we were chatting before we hit record, and I was like, just stop talking because this is all good. I want to get this on, <laughs> on the, um, the recording. Um, I wanted to start with, and I thought this is just super smart of you, with the first time you met Russell. Gosh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, so again, you mentioned I had a separate company, Monopolize Inc. It was a, an agency model where basically we worked with, worked with clients. Again, this is like 2008. Uh, 
really early internet days as far as marketers were, were concerned. And at the time I was doing a lot of direct response marketing. Uh, primary clients at that time were in the financial services, as you mentioned, uh, mortgage companies, financial advisors. And they were trying to find ways of really kind of getting more involved into this whole internet game. I signed up, I basically, had, I'd heard of Russell through a friend. He happened to be coming down to San Diego area where I lived and he was hosting a seminar. So I thought, you know, I'll go and, and listen to this internet thing and try to figure this piece out. I had really cut my teeth with Dan Kennedy and that those that's what i was gonna ask ago. who are some of your favorite direct response uh, people dan kennedy is where i definitely got my start and actually that's where i was first introduced to russell when he was doing some of the internet stuff for dan kennedy after yannick left and i uh, had the opportunity basically of attending an event he and Stu mclaren put on it was all about affiliate marketing and i remember when he stood up uh basically gosh this is I think Russell was probably 28, 29 at the time. It's been 12, 13 years he since then. He probably looks the same. He does. <laughs> very, very similar. And I remember just uh, basically just stood up there and said, hey, you know what? Uh, if you'd like to get to know us a little bit better, if you want to go to the back and just sign up for, you know, take us out to lunch or dinner, you, you can pick our brain and see what's going on. So I thought I learned a long time ago that uh, I can learn more from other people than I ever will from myself, especially those people who are basically mentors. So I quickly went to the back and I signed up for every breakfast, lunch, and dinner that uh, Russell had for the weekend. And we started a friendship that's grown now into a business partnership. Uh, for years, we did a couple of different businesses on the side. We tried different things in the fitness industry, network marketing industry, real estate industry. Um, some of them worked, some of them didn't. Uh, my very first product, Legendary Marketers, was uh, with Russell, uh, kind of doing some of those things. And really, it's just, it's become a friendship that, uh, we've enjoyed he came down to san diego multiple times and uh we went gosh for his 10th anniversary he and his wife came out and we sent sent him through the southern california and had a fun time with them and again it's just been more of a friendship and when click started he was kind enough to say you know what dave you might actually want to get involved in this one mm. and i'm so glad that i did so how did he you had your own stuff going on how mm -hmm. did he, I don't know, convince is the right word at that point to go, hey, here's the vision. And he's a, he's a masterful, you know, visionary salesperson. If anyone, is. Has, anyone watched a webinar of his, I, <laughs> you should watch a webinar. And so I want you to talk about what that conversation was like, but, but just do a quick plug for where can they watch? I know you have a book, Traffic Secrets. Yeah. Where can they watch a webinar so they can, they should buy, they should go through your whole funnel to learn from the funnel. In my opinion, uh, I don't care totally if you're agree. not interested in, in it at all, which you should be anyways, if you have a business, you can go to trafficsecrets.com. I know for the book, will they be able to get, sign up for the webinar there or how do they get uh, on the webinar? If you want to go directly to the webinar, go to secretsmasterclass.com mm -hmm. at secretsmasterclass.com. They can register. They can see the actual funnel that we, we use as a self liquidating offer. Yeah. And also we really, the idea anytime you're creating a webinar is if you can turn opt-ins into buyers as fast as possible, uh, before they actually get on the webinar, you'll find that uh, your webinar conversions skyrocket. And so that's one of yeah. the things we've been okay. playing around with. Quite so secretsmasterclass.com, check it out, sign up for their webinar, consume it, buy their stuff, get into their funnel. <laughs> I mean, like you said, Dave, honestly, the way you leap ahead is you paid you paid to get in the room and I've seen no better way of learning from someone is paying for all their stuff. Oh, I totally agree. No, I've, I don't care who you follow. Uh, again, you mentioned earlier, as far as dream 100, the most important part of dream 100 is you need to be buying whoever's on your dream 100. You need to be buying their content, their products. Yeah. So you understand who they are, what they're selling, what they're promoting and consume them. Uh, it's a much easier conversation when you sit down and you talk to someone and say, yeah, I actually remember buying whatever Oh my God. Was. I bought, um, I forgot if I, I watched the webinar, I bought um, one of Russell's products, then I bought the audio version, then I got the upsell <laughs> for a micro continuity dr drive. Sure, I remember those days. I, I went through the whole thing. The, these guys are some of the smartest markers around. I will buy all of their stuff and I'll learn no, from micro. it. Learn from the stuff itself, but learn from the process as well. Totally agree. The process is as important as the content on the back end. So we will talk about 
the launch of Traffic Secrets, what you're doing behind the scenes, what you're doing not behind the scenes. I mean, for, for all of you, you kind of just share the behind the scenes because that's part of ClickFunnels. You use ClickFunnels <laughs> and so you want to share the behind the scenes. It's not just an info you know, company, it's actually a software company. So, but how did he convince you, Dave? I had, uh, again, Russell and what I What was that conversation it? like? We've done a ton of different uh, business things over the years. Uh, I've flown up to Boise multiple times and he's always been trying to get me to move from Southern California to Boise. And I'm like, Russell, that's just not <laughs> going to happen, my friend. I, I'm not know, leaving San Diego. I looked I, at your my, LinkedIn page. I'm like, mm, this had to take some convincing. He's in Boise now. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, I've lived in San Diego for 20 years. Uh, again, it's raised our family there. It's been a fun, fun experience. Um, it was one of those things, honestly, I had just come through a crazy financial recovery and uh, had finally gotten back on top. And uh, I said, you know what, we're thinking about doing the startup. And I'm like, Russell, I, man, I love you <laughs> more than I do my own brothers. And I, but I just, I don't know if I'm ready yet. And so we kind of, kind of talked around, toyed around about it. Uh, he actually was down at TNC and uh, it was the first time that we're actually at a actually was at Mike Phil Sames event was the first time it happened in San Diego. And I remember going there and, and seeing his pitch from stage for uh, very, again, early, early click funnels. This is gosh, click funnels really launched September 14th and this is October, 2014. And I remember at that point going, there's something here, mm. there's something here this time. And so uh, basically the invitation was extended right then and there. And uh, I stayed in San Diego for the first two years uh, only because I'm like, I'm, I've done enough business to know they don't you all just work. Wanna, yeah, you want to make <laughs> and sure. And before I uprooted my family, uh, so we stayed there uh, and got the ClickFunnels started from the ground up, built it to where it was. And uh, it, we were at a point with, uh, I've got four boys and my there's a two-year gap between my oldest. So uh, 25 and 22, uh, 25, 24, and then 19 and 17. Oh. And uh, so... It was that three-year gap between my two and three. We thought, you know, if we're going to make the change, this would be the year to do it. Otherwise, I'm going to let the kids finish through high school and everything else. And so, so were they in high school at the time, or where were where were my, they? So Christian's my third son, uh, four boys, and so he was a he just finished his freshman year, going into his sophomore year. Mm. And I thought, man, this is going to be a that's tough a tough transition. conversation to have. Oh. You know, I mean, you know, we talk I, about the business side. Even if ClickFunnels is ultra successful, uprooting your family is no joke right? Oh, and, was, and having kids like hate you is no joke. Yeah. Dave. No, it so. was, it was a very difficult, fortunately I've got a great relationship with my boys. They're super, super supportive. Um, but it was still tough. There's again, massive kudos to my wife and my, my boys, uh, making that transition. It was yeah. easier for me cause I, I'd been up, I was commuting every other week to Boise at that time. Yeah. Uh, and just, I was really familiar with what was going on and, and had established myself from, a career standpoint and office situation, but not from a, you know, family, friends and everything else in the area. And that was, that was tough. There's no, that was a probably one of the most difficult years my boys had. What was that conversation like when you brought it up to them? And what did they say when you said, uh, we're moving to Boise or was it, should we move to Boise? How do you, how do you, you know, navigate um, that? the first harder conversation with my wife, uh, we actually were, I remember, we were skiing, we were going up the lift, and I'm like, sweetie, um, <laughs> she could push you. That's a terrible place yeah. to, to bring that. said, uh, what would you think about moving to Boise? And she's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm just, I just want to see what you think. She says, I, I have no interest. We're, we've had our family here 20 years. Why would we do that, Dave? I'm like, because well, I'm tired of commuting every single week, and I miss you guys. I want to be with you guys. Yeah. And so we you know, spent a lot of time thinking about it, praying about it, involved the boys in the decision. And uh, when everyone felt good about it, we pulled the trigger. You know, it's a tough, tough thing to navigate, you know, extremely. Um, so, cause part of that lesson is, is to really grow a company, you need to attract amazing talent. And he attract, even though you were doing your own thing and, you know, going from entrepreneur to entrepreneur, um, it's tough to attract really good people, you know? Oh, it is. So I'm uh, honestly, that's why I was curious of how he attracted, how he attracted you. Oh, well, you know? I think, I know he knew that, uh, I wouldn't do it without equity. So that was the, one Got of the main it. things. Um, but at the same time, 
uh, you have to give Russell's, people a stake in the stake. Yeah, the but I think the, um, again, kudos to he and Todd. The whole idea behind this has really always been about finding the very best talent and paying them well. Yeah. Um, again, there's six partners, myself included, in ClickFunnels. And we've been fortunate that we've been here for really from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. And so we, we all, we've all known what it's like when uh, there wasn't money <laughs> and when uh, we all had side gigs, basically trying to pay the bills while we got trying to grow click funnels. So it's a, it's not, it's one of those things when you're not taking on VC capital and, and funding, um, you, you got to really, bootstrap. Yeah. You bootstrap real hard. Um, talk, I want to talk about the evolution, the evolution of your position and then the evolution of, you know, hold on one second. Um, the evolution of your position and then the evolution of click funnels in general. So talk about your, what was click funnels like at the time? Uh, you know, when we first started, it was, it's the great thing is everyone, it was all hands on deck. Uh, we had, you know, Todd, Todd was doing all the development. Uh, we brought in Dylan, uh, as also helped with a ton with the UI. Uh, Ryan Montgomery came in and helped a lot from a CTO perspective. Um, Russell obviously was the, the mind, the marketing mind behind it. Uh, myself involved heavily in, in doing whatever, again, it's just, it's an all hands on deck, whatever it's going to take. Uh, so myself, uh, John Parks and Brent Co-Peters were uh, marketing traffic, affiliates, whatever it was going to take to grow it. And I think I've been fortunate enough. Uh, I've had a lot of partnerships over my life. Some of them work, some of them don't. And uh, you learn very quickly that uh, I would never go into partnership with anybody who hadn't had failed at another business in the past. Uh, it was just important for me. I think you learn a lot as, a, as an entrepreneur when you go through failures and when you have loss. Yeah. That's, that's what defines who you really are. It's like, what, what do you do then? <laughs> Uh, did you stab your other partners in the back? Did you, uh, I mean, it's that kind of stuff uh, where you, you know what, we're all in this thing and we're going to figure this mm -hmm. thing out or does everyone just flee and run and go to their own thing? It's like uh, being was, married. Like, oh if, yeah. If you having a oh. fight, like you really know each other when you have your first fight and how people react in, in the fight and after the fight. Yeah. And we were fortunate that all of us had, I mean, none of us were stupid enough to have, large houses and payments and a lot of debt, which helped. Uh, so we didn't have to, yeah. we didn't need to have a whole bunch of money to, to crack. To, yeah. yeah. And so I think that uh, when you're looking at a partnership, understanding what that nut is, um, that changes people's perspective and it changes their motivation. So what did click funnels look like at the time? Original concept. And then, you know, I know you said yeah, so someone was built on the back of webinars. So I'll have you talk a little bit about what you were doing at the time. So the whole idea really came from the, uh, at the time, uh, Russell had a, uh, a supplement product that he was working with. Todd Dickerson was helping build a lot of the funnels. They were doing a ton of different funnels. And Todd was like, you know, we keep building the exact same skeleton all the time, but it's taking us, you know, two to three months to get someone to do the copy, someone to do the graphics, someone to do the design, someone to split it up. I mean, it was just, and so he thought there's got to be a simpler, easier way. And it was out of that necessity for their own business uh, that they thought, you know what, let's see if I could actually build this. And Todd said, if I was going to build it, Russell, what would you want? And that's where it was just literally, let's get on a whiteboard and let's whiteboard this thing out. What would be the ideal product? And created that product. Then again, you, as any, as any original creator, you think everybody's going to want this. We're going to have 10,000 customers in two days. And uh, when the floodgates opened, there was no water to, to come through. So uh, when we first started, uh, we had two or three attempts before we started getting traction. As I alluded to earlier, the real traction came when Russell spoke at Mike Phil Sames event in San Diego. It was during that webinar, uh, that basically that stage pitch that uh, we realized, you know what, we've got something real here. Uh, mm -hmm. That was the first time we'd really had a, had enough interest from a table rush standpoint to where Russell, I remember, remember that evening, we were sitting there talking about it. He was like, you know what, we finally have something. I know exactly what it's going to take to grow and build this thing. And it was the webinar. And so we went out and started literally talking to all the affiliates, anyone we could who had large lists that we could promote it to. And we ended up uh, building ClickFunnels off of the back of a webinar. I remember the, our homepage basically was a webinar registration page. And it was, you know, my weird niche funnel made $17,937 a day. And, and basically how you can, <laughs> how you can model it. 
And so for us, that was uh, really became the primary focus. Uh, we learned, uh, Russell, that kind of started the idea as far as the perfect webinar. And it was from that that became one of the things we ended up uh, modeling and using. Uh, the perfect webinar evolved and changed over time, but uh, it really had its genesis back in those days. Uh, Russell was doing, gosh, at sometimes you know two and three webinars a day. It was exhausting, absolutely exhausting. I remember talking to you know, some of the affiliates. You get all the promises. Oh yeah, I'll have you know five hundred people on the webinar and five show up. And 10 show up. <laughs> yes, like, oh I've my been gosh. There. Yeah. And I still have to, you know, you still have to go through and you got to present as if you have 500 people on. And uh, Russell did an amazing job of just staying focused and perfecting his craft uh, from a webinar's perspective. And that really became the genesis of what later became Expert Secrets and, and other tools. So Dave, um, on the perfect webinar, maybe talk about some components of the perfect webinar, but what was, what is the offer, what was the offer then? At the time, because yeah. a big component, I mean, one of the big components of a perfect webinar is a really good offer. It always starts with the offer. Yeah. <laughs> so you start, anytime you're building any webinar, it always starts with your stack slide. Um, for us, what it was at that time was a year's worth of ClickFunnels for free at nine ninety seven. And what they were paying for was training. And so what we learned a long time ago was anytime you can sell something for free, your conversions go through the roof. And so we're always trying to find ways, how can... How can we sell something for free? I love free? that. Sell something for free. That should be and, your next book. <laughs> but it really has been. I mean, you take a look at all three of our book funnels. It's, it's a free plus shipping offer. And our webinar was the same situation where you pay for the training, you pay for the resources, and we'll actually allow you to have the software for free. At the time, it was $9.97 for 12 months. It then later turned to $9.97 for six months. Uh, and then we did $19.97. We were doing live events for a year's worth. So they were paying for one thing, but getting the software for free. Exactly. Yeah. Now it's really, it's really hard to sell software by itself. Um, it's just, it's just a very, I mean, we were looking just to, you know, if you take a look from a metric standpoint, your cost to acquire a customer for a free trial for most software for us, it was going to be right around 140 to $150. We just couldn't afford that. We we're bootstrapped. There's no way in the world realizing, you know, the 40% of those people actually convert to a paying customer on day 14. Um, it just, the, the numbers just weren't there. And so for us, uh, what it allowed us to do is to sell something at a thousand dollars, bring in a bunch of revenue. It helped us grow and scale faster. Uh, profitability was hit the very first year, uh, which really helped us. And that's what allowed us to, to really build and scale. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, People always think, oh, if I could just have a software company where there's recurring revenue and I joke <laughs> around in with people, I've talked to enough SaaS founders to be like, I just want to get them a t-shirt that says got churn question mark. And you know, <laughs> because you feel the pain. I mean, a lot of businesses, like if it's recurring, it's like there's a pain of churn. People don't realize people churn. You don't just get a customer and they stay forever. <laughs> they no, no, no. will churn off a platform. So even when you acquire that customer, you know, there's a life cycle. I remember even early on, uh, I don't remember if it was Russell Brunson with his micro continuity or one of them says he knew with whatever membership site he had, they churned at three months. So he would do something really special oh, at absolutely. like, you know, month two, you know, or whatever it is. I remember actually buying Alex Mendozian's course years ago on stick strategies uh, mm. for that whole purpose, because you're right you're going to find that most membership sites, it's a three to four month life, lifetime. I mean, that's just about what it is. And so if you're, you figure if you're paying, if a person's paying, you know, $37, it's a hundred dollar, hundred, $120 lifetime value of a client. Yeah. And so the main things I'm always looking at is, okay, if, how much, first of all, can I afford, afford to spend to acquire that customer? And then more importantly, how do I get them to stick one more month? Cause that next month is, can be a 25% increase or 30% increase in your revenue. And another month after that. So stick strategies at, you know, month, month two and a half or three become really, really important. Yeah. I mean, people don't realize, well, okay, if it's three months and you get them to, st sometimes you get them to stick past three months, that could mean they stick for a year, right? It's not oh, yeah. like, oh, stick yeah. to four months or six months, but you, you have these, these milestones, I guess. So Dave, I'd love to hear your favorite stick strategies. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, I can tell you one of our stick strategies we did very beginning was, uh, go through the onboarding sequence and we'll send you a free t-shirt. And so we had our funnel hacker t-shirt 
it's been amazing. I, I remember talking to our CFO many times. He's like, Dave, do you understand how much those t-shirts are costing us? He says, the shipping and everything else. I'm like, please, Clint, understand those t-shirts. I can't tell you how many times I've ran across people who will basically say, you know, Dave, this t-shirt's cost me over $1,000. I've yet to use ClickFunnels, but I don't cancel my <laughs> subscription because I've got this t-shirt. And so there's a, there's, I can tell you some of the best things I've seen from stick strategies are some sort of a physical component. Hmm. I remember years ago, Dan Kennedy uh, had his no BS newsletter. And what he would end up doing is he would send out a binder, a huge, you know, two and a half, three inch binder with the first issue and then little tabs for every single month. So it's really hard as a human being not to finish something. You're like, you're a quitter if you, if you, yeah. Exactly. And so it, I'm going to fill it. I'm going to fill this binder. At least I'm going to fill the first year. And so those little tiny things, uh, again, it was an, 37 97 dollar whatever it was newsletter but realize that if you can get someone just to stick and, and pay it makes a big difference um i can tell you there's when it comes to stick strategies the real thing is you got to find out what's the pain point that a person why is it why is the person going to leave mm. and what are the things you can do to add to to alleviate that pain to get them to stick one more month sometimes it's just reciprocity where again a t-shirt it's just reciprocity they feel like gosh you know i'm wearing this and they identify with that cult or that the culture of, you know, I'm a funnel hacker and I know I can't do it right now, but I'm going to do it because the dream is still there. The hope is still there. Yeah. yeah. And, and people want, they know they want to get to it. It's just, it doesn't fit in right now time-wise. And so that t-shirt reminds them on a regular basis. I, I, I've seen that t-shirt literally around the world now as I've traveled and it's been fun just to see, you know, how long you've been with ClickFunnels? What have you been doing? How did, how did you find out about it's it? A it's a great conversation just, starter. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's been wonderful. So what else, favorite uh, stick strategies for ClickFunnels, and then I'd love to hear your favorite stick strategies that you've been a part of. Like you mentioned the Dan Kennedy, you got, you know, that was something that you, you it was used oh on gosh. you. What there, are your there's, favorite there's, ClickFunnels ones first? Is it a t-shirt, any, any the others that are notable? Uh, the yeah. t-shirt's been one, we've, again, we've, we've had a monthly continuity um, uh, Funnel University newsletter we've mailed out. Mm -hmm. uh, again, it comes in a binder, we've got, uh, uh, we did the same thing with our two comic club X, uh, coaching program. It's got a binder. Um, another thing we've done from a stick strategy is each month. In, one of the main things when you're looking at stick strategy is how can you over deliver? And the, if it's something like, Oh my gosh, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. So one of the things we've used in, uh, for some of our coaching programs has been, uh, send them out a monthly book. And so it's now a book that they're involved in and it's, it's a great marketing book. And so realize, yeah, they're, they're getting everything else with whatever the, the program is, but now they also have a, they're getting a free book. And so we sent out uh, for our two comic club X coaching program in the first year, a book every single month and became a book club where people were now reading the books and they were commenting in the Facebook group about what they were learning. Uh, we ended up, um, gosh, other stick strategies, even, even on the boxes that uh, we send things out, uh, there's typically a call to action. Uh, right now, we just put together Russell's Traffic Secrets box. And so instead of just shipping out a box in a normal, you know, brown mailer, we have a stick strategy on there. It's like, Hey, you know, call this number and get a special message from, from Russell or, or scan this QR code and get a special message it allows them to feel connected with what they just purchased. And it mm. reminds them about why they bought it. Um, I, I go on and on. I mean, everything we do, I'm trying to find what is the stick strategy? How can we actually every, again, churn is the most important thing. And for us, it's, how do you actually help someone stick a little longer? You know, I want to, I could listen to you all day, by the way, Dave, on stick strategies. And um, seriously, and uh, I'd love to hear about, I know people use, you know, click funnels for membership sites. And I'm wondering how, you know, really stick strategies are helping people more, be more successful with the product because if they're more successful with the product or service, they will stick. So, I see it as a very, like you said, it's over delivering and it's helping people be successful with implementing what they've purchased. And so I'm wondering what helps people be most successful with creating membership sites on ClickFunnels. But before you answer that, you mentioned over deliver. I want to give a shout out to Brian Kurtz who wrote a book called over deliver. Love Brian. Amazing Brian's a dear friend. friend. Amazing guy. Amazing. Check out over deliver. Um, everything, you know, Brian basically became quick friends because of a podcast. I had him on afterwards. I'm like, I love you, Brian. You're the, you're, I mean, how do we hang out? You know? And so 
Brian's um, one of the most genuine people you will ever meet. I've, I've had the opportunity of having him on my podcast, but more important than that, I've, I, anytime you spend time with Brian, you always come away uplifted. He is a man who has a gift for lifting people. And I would, if you ever get a chance to buy anything from Brian Kurtz, please buy it from him. And then mm-hmm. you'll find, again, he's got a ton of stick strategies and stuff he does as well. Yeah. A genius direct response marketer. Um, so before about the membership sites, Dave, what are you, some of your favorite books? I mentioned Over Deliver. I don't oh, know the ones you've sent out to your, your uh, two comma club group. What, what are some of your favorites? Um, honestly, I'm, <laughs> uh, one I'm reading recently, uh, rereading is The Road Less Stupid by Keith Cunningham. Okay. Great book. Uh, from a, gosh, there's so many of them. Uh, I can tell you, geez, I go on and on. Uh, yeah, great pull leads. a couple off the shelf. Yeah. Great Leads is an awesome one. Mm. If you're not familiar with Great Leads, Michael Masterson does an awesome job and great, great leads. Um, I loved High Growth Handbook from Developing and Growing Businesses. Uh, John Maxwell stuff on leadership right now. The, mm-hmm. uh, gosh, it goes on and on. There's, I, um, gosh, one of the, see what's up there. Not, um, for us, uh, one of the things we're always looking at, what are the things we can do to scale and grow a company? Mm. And so I'm, I'm paying attention to that kind of stuff quite a bit these days. Uh, crossing the chasm has been one. I've, a lot of it just kind of depends on what, I'm, <laughs> what I need to fall or whatever the problem I'm trying to solve yeah. right now is what I'm, what I'm into. So what have you found are recommendations? I know like Reed Hoffman has a book on that as well, I think. Um, recommendations for what specifically? For you were saying scaling and growing the company. So you- High Growth Handbook is a great one. Mm-hmm. Um, again, it's put out by Stripe. Uh, and it's actually goes through and really identifies. They talk to quite a few different founders and how they've actually grown and scaled their companies. So high growth handbook is awesome. Again, I mentioned uh, the road less stupid by Keith Cunningham. Uh, Keith Cunningham is kind of the, the original uh, rich dad. Kiyosaki basically met with and uh, spent time with him. He has a four day MBA program. It's a great, great program. A uh, man who is a master teacher. He does a great job of, of building companies, but he sucks at marketing and he hates that part of it. And it's always been fun for me. I've talked to Keith as I, I attended his four day master or his four day MBA. And he's like, Dave, I just wish I had your guys ability to market because I can <laughs> grow and scale any company once it gets going. But the startup phase is not his it's favorite. Tough. You know, it's tough. It is. Startup it, phase it totally is no is. joke, Dave. Yeah. I mean, so thanks for sharing that. I have a couple audible credits, so I want to know what I should be, uh, what I should be buying. And uh, oh man, I want, I love hearing your I'll recommendations. I'll go real fast through audible here. Cause that's where I, I consume a ton of content. Yeah. And I'll see what some of this stuff, uh, I'll, you know, it's been fascinating as I take a look at some of the things, um, the hard thing about hard things mm. is when I was, uh, again, that's Ben Horowitz's program. Yeah. Um, but the, anything that starts off with like a rap quote is a good book. You know, I think that one starts <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's, uh, just kind of depends on which, uh, actually double your profits by mm-hmm. Bob Pfeiffer is one. It's a, it's a fast read, fast to listen to it is cutthroat. So if, if you're not willing to, again, for this whole COVID thing, coronavirus type of deal, that's probably one of the, it's like 78 things you can do to double your profits mm. and they're not always that friendly. Um, oh, really? Interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh, the Ride of a Lifetime was, I just listened to, uh, that was uh, Bob Iger's story about Disney mm. and his thing there. Um, Phil Knight's story, uh, Shoe Dog, was great. Oh, that's one of my favorites of all time for sure. Just awesome. I, I go on it. My gosh. Yeah. No, I love it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I love to hear what people are reading because it, it just gives an insight into what we should be doing. And um, so talk about membership sites. So People who have membership sites or don't obviously can use ClickFunnels. If you didn't know, you can use ClickFunnels to power your membership site, right? And so what are some great ways you've seen people use membership sites and ClickFunnels and maybe some of the ways that they were successful? Um, Oh, man. Um, For us, I think some of the great things about membership sites, it's if nothing else, it's a place to contain a lot of content. And unfortunately for a lot of people, they'll just send out... Uh, they send them videos and they send them PDFs and they send them different resources, but there's not a place where they can go to get it all in one place. Mm-hmm. And so if, if you find yourself, you know, dripping things out or 
even from a drip campaign, a membership site works a ton better where you can continue to drive them right back to it. I've seen people use free membership sites just for that reason, just to contain all the content because now a person feels like they're connecting with you on a much more frequent basis. Uh, you made mention earlier as far as microcontinuity, which was the idea of having a membership that was a limited period of time. Uh, Russell's microcontinuity program back, gosh, I think it was 2011 or 12 or something like that. It was a long time ago. Yeah. But again, the whole idea was, uh, people don't want to feel like they're stuck in something for a long, long and never ending piece. And so microcontinuity was, you know what, this is a four or a six month membership platform and it's, you're going to get it done in that period of time. Uh, another one I can tell you right now, we've seen great success with, and that's uh, a challenge, a 30 day challenge or something like that. Our one funnel away challenge works the same way where you do have it. It's in a membership site. It's a 30 day challenge. And you go right through it in 30 days, it's done but you have the opportunity of going back to it. And it's been interesting. We've had uh, people rebuy the program just for the opportunity of going through it. And really? so there's, wow. you have the membership side and then you have the live component as far as the teaching. And if they want the ongoing continuity or you have the membership side there, that's 30 days. But if you want to continue to participate on with the group, you then sign up again to go through the, the yeah. new group. And so there's, gosh, there's so many different ways. I think the, the problem for a lot of people with membership sites, they feel like there's only a certain certain few things they can do. Membership sites are huge. Uh, Stu McLaren, dear friend of mine, actually is uh, actually has a launch going on right now for his tribe, <clears throat> which teaches people about memberships. And I think the, the whole idea, if you understand what you're really trying to do is, is create a community through your membership. And that in and of itself will help grow and scale your business. And uh, Lady Boss, Brandon and Kaylin Poulin did an amazing job of having a monthly membership site and uh, things they would add to that each month uh, were things like adding in recipes, adding in fitness workouts, adding in different pieces. So people stuck because they knew that there was something new coming every single month. Hmm. And they go in and they could see all the old stuff that they wanted the newest, latest, greatest. And that was one of their stick strategies, having new content put in there. So you can do the evergreen content. You can do new content. A lot of it just depends on, on how much content you want to create. You know, Dave, obviously ClickFunnels – there's many, many people using it now. Um, who do you, were you just super excited to hear like a notable person that's like, wow, ClickFunnels has made it. Like these people are using ClickFunnels. <laughs> oh my gosh. Because no matter um, how big you are, when you have certain people using the platform, there's a certain sense of pride in what you've created, right? You so know, who I'm, was that for I'm, you? Uh, I'm so bad. I'm not starstruck by people. No. And I wish I was. Um, it's... It's fun for me to see different people. Uh, gosh, you know what? I've, I've spent time on the phone with Damon, Damon John and, and Shark, uh, their whole Shark thing. And so Damon's company runs off, a lot of their products run off of ClickFunnels. Yeah. Um, and so that's fun. But honestly, for me, I can tell you the thing that I enjoy more than anything else are the people no one knows about who then become part of our two comic club award winning mm -hmm. uh, award winners. Um, and so, you know, Gabe Schillinger, a guy who basically sells beats which is just music riffs on beats. and all of a sudden oh, gotcha. he's he sells you know these he's basically just been there behind the scenes creating a whole bunch of of soundtracks and beats that are you know he's got a huge long list of a lab a celebrity type of people who have used his beats in their music and he's now taught other people how to do it and so here's a guy who basically is usually what you would never think about uh, is now been able to hit, you know, over a million dollars inside of his sales funnels. Now is on to a second one. Um, it's people like that. Those are the people I get most excited about. Who, who strike, who sticks out to you as some of your favorite, because some of them are really heart wrenching stories also. Right. And you've allowed, oh, you've, sure. you've powered them, their dream and of allowing them to, I guess, uh, a freedom. Does anyone yeah, stick out to you on that? That is especially. Um, oh man put me on spot as far as I mean I remember Dave just let you think about that for a second I remember one of my favorite shows is the prophet with Marcus Lemonis and I remember seeing a scene where Russell comes on and he's showing you know one of the businesses using click funnels and I thought that was a really cool that must have been a cool moment also that was fun so we had Marcus Lemonis at uh, funnel hacking life too and Marcus if those of you guys don't know he is like one of the most humble guys you'll ever meet. He shows up in an Uber <laughs> and just walks in. I was like, what? I mean, I'm used to people coming in. I mean, like Tony we've had, he's got bodyguards and everything else. And it's like this huge entourage. And he literally just walks in and just, I, 
I'm like, Marcus, I'm so sorry. We weren't there to meet you. And he's like, oh, no, no, this is no big deal. And so we, we sat down. Yeah, we first walked him into the, the event room. And, you know, I think at that time we've had, you know, 1,200, 1,500 people there. He's like, these people are like crazy. And they're here for software? I said, <laughs> what do you guys really do? And so we had the opportunity of sitting down with Marcus beforehand and kind of get him up to speed on what ClickFunnels does. And then afterwards, it was like, so what you're telling me is if people really understood sales funnel, every single business could use a sales funnel. And like, exactly. And so after that is when I remember uh, talking with Russell and Todd and the rest of the team and saying, gosh, wouldn't it be cool if someday Marcus actually wanted to use our, our software? And it was about six months, eight months later where we got a call and, and Marcus was like, hey, what would you think about helping me with flex watches? And so Russell and I flew out to uh, Southern California and basically sat down with Marcus and the team at Flex Watches and they filmed that episode. That's amazing. Yeah. And you've had many, you know, what, when, what time of year do you always have at the same time of year for the Funnel Hacking Conference for people to check out and where should they, where should they go yeah. to learn more about like future dates? So it's funnelhackinglive.com and uh, we typically have it in the first quarter of the year. So we get everyone kicking things off the right way. Uh, we might have to change it this next year just due to coronavirus type of things. Yeah. But uh, usually it's sometime between January and March. Got it. Yeah. So check out funnelhackinglive.com. Check out their conference. If you haven't seen the videos from it, I mean, the, it's still stuck in my head, Dave, about the song, Click Funnels. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? And that... <laughs> That is stuck in my head. So I sort yeah, of. It's kind of fun when you have. <laughs> when friends create rap songs about uh, your, your program, it's kind of fun. Yeah. So check so huge that. shout out to this record, uh, Sunny D, the ClickFunnels rap. Yes. And check it out on where, where I mean, I think you can check it out on YouTube, but go, YouTube probably easy. Check out place. ClickFunnels rap. You have to watch it. It's hilarious. It's, it's great. Um, yeah. It's fantastic. So the. Let's talk a little bit about the, you're launching a book, okay, trafficsecrets.com and walk people through some of the, you know, the pre work and then where they should go and then a little bit about the funnel. Uh, the pre work was uh, two years of Russell's bleeding, blood, sweat and tears to, to get it created. Um, mm -hmm. Again, Russell has become an amazing author and writer. He's just it's been fun for me. I've been with him through the process of each of the three books. Uh, he ended up writing Traffic Secrets and then afterwards went back and rewrote Dotcom Secrets and Expert Secrets, adding 30,000 words to, to each one of them. Uh, he's, just, he's literally become a masterful writer. And it's been fun just to see the, the birthing process of this, uh, the amount of research that he goes into to really understand the story. And really, I don't, there are very few people, I don't know if anyone has become a better storyteller than Russell has these days. And he just does a great, great job of telling stories and really, and that was one of the things when he went back to rewrite Dotcom Secrets and Expert Secrets was to make sure that every single principal had a story tied to it. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the, the whole idea. One of the things he, Russell's taught a ton recently, and that is for people to really understand what you're doing and to, to buy into it, they have to understand how you either learned it or earned it. And if you can't tell the story about how, how you've learned or earned what it is that you're trying to provide to these people, they don't have that perceived value. And so by telling the story beforehand, as far as how they, you've learned something or you've earned something, it actually increases the value of what you're about ready to offer them. And not only does it increase the value, it then also increases the importance for you to consume what you're about ready to receive. And so it's a huge, you want to talk about stick strategies, make sure anything, any story you're Anytime you're going to sell something beforehand, you've told them a story as far as how you learned or earned that. And I mean, it's the point now where literally at every one of our marketing meetings or anything else before he's about ready to say what he wants to do next. It's let me tell you how I learned or earned this. And mm -hmm. he doesn't preface it that way, but that's exactly what's about ready to take place. Mm -hmm. And so, Jeff, you know, they could check it out at trafficsecrets.com. Um, walk me through some of the psychology of, of the funnel, I guess. Yeah. And obviously More you created with ClickFunnels so they can check out all the software works too. Um, yeah, walk me through so, the funnel a little bit. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, one of the things Russell loves to do is sell things for free. So it's a free plus shipping offer. I think our free plus shipping offer, our two-step order form has probably been copied by more people than any, at least especially in the Tripwire uh, 
physical books, anything like that. It's, it's literally become, if you want to sell something, that's the way to do it. Uh, the idea behind it, if you go to the page, you're going to find at the top is going to be a video telling a story about, uh, again, how he learned or earned uh, the content that's in Traffic Secrets. After that is a, a ton of actual hard copy, uh, long, long form, long sales form type of copy you would expect to see from a direct response marketing standpoint. And then there's a two-step order form where they're entering their name, their email address, and then the next page is where they actually enter in uh, mailing address and credit card information. That allows us to get the information up front so we can continue to market them on an ongoing basis. Uh, from there, uh, this, in the past we've, so years ago, I, some of your audience might remember, if you went to GoDaddy, you were in this never ending trail of, of upsells. I mean, it, you wanted to go buy a domain and it'd take you a half hour to get through to the checkout because do you want this, do you want this, do you want this? And uh, as we've done a bunch of funnels, one of the things we've learned is people can handle up to about two. Two OTOs is about the most that a person can really, before they get start getting frustrated. And the last thing you want is someone buying your product being frustrated at the end of the buying process. Yeah. So one of the things we've added is what we refer to as an order form bump on the credit card page. And it's a real simple thing. It's, it literally is probably no more than five, six, seven lines of copy. So it's got to be something simple. Uh, the whole idea behind it though is, so take for example, on, on the Traffic Secrets book, it's free plus shipping, nine ninety five, nine ninety seven dollars for the book, nineteen ninety seven. if you wanted to international shipping. You then go to the order form bump. And the order form bump is, do you want the audio version? And the I audio buy version, that 100% of the time, always. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's a $37 upsale. What it does though, because we're always looking at, at how can I get, I want to make sure that my average cart value, if I, the idea here is if I can spend as, if my cost to acquire a customer is the same as my average cart value or, or less, I'm, if I can get a break even funnel, I'm in the money because I know my value ladder on the upside is going to be huge. It's so huge. Yeah. I'm really just trying to acquire customers for as low cost as possible. So the idea for us was trying to find a way that you could increase your average car value. Most of our book funnels, typically our average car value range is between 32 and $38. Yeah. I'm just seeing how much money I'm going to be spending once I go through this, this funnel. Okay? So <laughs> go, go on. <laughs> so our average, our average car value on the traffic secrets book actually ended in the 55 to 65 range. So more than doubled. And it was because of what we, I'm going to talk to you about right now and what we ended up doing. So we had the order form bump for the audio version. And then we also, we added actually a second order form bump. We've never done that before. It's the first time we've ever done it. And the second order form bump was uh, for $97. And this was for a two day training that Russell had done about traffic secrets. So anytime Russell's ever written a book, what he actually ends up doing is teaching the concepts first. And so this is that live training in, in a recording that you have access to. So it's the, uh, $9.95 for the book, $37 for the uh, order form bump for the audio book, and then $97, which is a product we've sold for over, you know, originally $3,000 to attend and then $300 to the recordings. From there, it then went to the first OTO. And the first OTO was, or it still is, is our box set. So the box set is um, all, four, all four of the books. So it's Doctor mm. Secrets, Expert Secrets, Traffic Secrets. And mm -hmm. then we wrote a fourth book. And the only way you get that fourth book is in the box set. And that's called Unlock the Secrets. And what mm. it does is it basically walks you through how to use all three books at the same time. And so it's, a, it's basically a, a study guide for the three books. And so we ended up selling that for $97 and we'd never done this before where we actually added an order form bump on the OTO page. And so we added an order form bump for people to join our one funnel away challenge. If they wanted to join that at $97. And then we added another order form bump that we've split test a couple of times and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but that was awesome for us. Mm. We then went to the second OTO and on the second OTO is a, we went out and, uh, Good friend of mine, uh, Mikhail, runs a company called Funnelytics. And the idea behind Funnelytics is it actually helps you draw, draw out your funnel, map it out, and then to actually track it. And so there's code where you, it would track up to 100,000 customers or, or 500,000 visitors. And so we ended up having, uh, you could buy that product for either 397 or 497. So 397 was for 100,000 unique visitors and 497 was for five, uh, five, 500,000 unique visitors. And so by having order bumps on OTO pages, it actually increased our cart value. And fortunately, uh, was a very positive experience for all of our buyers because they really only felt like they were seeing 
two OTOs, even though they were really approached with six. Mm. And so what point do, do people say, okay, I should just get ClickFunnels <laughs> in this process? Uh, so on the thank you page is yeah. where we actually introduce ClickFunnels to them. Okay. So as soon as they get to the thank you page, they then- Like if the you don't know already, which they should. <laughs> a lot of them don't. It's the really? cold traffic. Is that uh, true? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are coming in for traffic. They, they don't know that much about ClickFunnels. Uh, the mm -hmm. great thing for us with Traffic Secrets, it's probably the most evergreen and most green pasture for us to, to farm because there's so many people who are dying to learn traffic these days. Mm -hmm. And the book is, fortunately, the book wasn't written. It's, it has evergreen content, so it'll be around for the next 30, 40, 50, 100 years, a legacy book that for anybody ever wants to use traffic from your own. Mm -hmm. Dave, I want to be the first one to thank you. This is fantastic. Um, you know, I want to respect your time, but I could listen to you for two hours, talk about, <laughs> go deep in any of these topics. Um, I want to point people towards um, trafficseekers.com, obviously, clickfunnels.com, obviously, for the software that powers all of this, um, secretsmasterclass.com, check out their webinar, and funnelhackinglive.com for their amazing events. Um, what else did I miss? Where else should we point people towards? I think that's, uh, it'll be interesting. As you guys go through Secrets Masterclass, you'll actually see us implementing a lot of things we just talked about where uh, Secrets Masterclass is a webinar. And usually on most webinars, you sign up and then you go to register. You then go from the registration page straight to the thank you page. We actually uh, have a pop-up that allows them to, we're trying to find out more. So what are the three different things are you struggling with? Are you struggling with your funnel? Are you struggling with conversion? Are you struggling with traffic? And then when they click on that, it then takes them to a video of Russell talking about whatever one of those three things were, and then gives them the opportunity to buy one of the three books, .com secrets for building your funnel, expert secrets for conversion, and traffic secrets for uh, traffic, obviously. The whole idea behind that is it's allowed us to get a self-liquidating offer in place at the very beginning where our, we can now spend more because we're getting sales before people actually get to the webinar. And one of the things we found is anytime someone buys something from you, their likelihood of actually showing up and attending the webinar skyrockets. And then the other thing is they already bought one product. The hardest thing about for anybody in internet marketing is getting that first dollar online. Once you've got that first dollar, you now have trust. And for us, it's been amazing to see when they actually sign up and go, they attend the webinar. Those people who bought the book, they're the, the multiple as far as people who actually end up buying the, the offer at the end is skyrockets. Yeah. One of my favorite first dollar stories of all time is Stu McLaren's. You probably know the story really well. Um, you could check out on Inspired Insider. He tells that story of how he made his first dollar online. I'm not going to ruin the punchline, <laughs> but you should listen to that because um, it's really amazing. Dave, thank you. Everyone check out clickfunnels.com. Check it out. Use it. Get it. Implement it. Dave, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks so much. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a peach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand.